Every time we try to show our glory, they look down on us. They keep on holding us off down there in the dark. And every fight we lose some of the little honor we have left, which drives us further to believing that we shouldn't exist. But I am done with sitting here accepting our fate to nothing. Today it ends. Mark my words, humanity. Cause this is just the beginning of something great. The chance of you changing your mind may be zero. But to me, that sounds like a 100% chance to do the impossible. While you keep on looking for an easy way out, I choose to master the impossible path ahead of me. Time to teach those punks a lesson. So don't worry, I got your back. Raise your flag, friends. The symbol of revolution. Hammer. The most iconic pacing weapon in Monster Hunter. Depending on how long you charge your attack, the whole animation, damage and way to pull off combos changes. When you let go of the button it is your decision on what exactly do I want to pull off in this specific situation. You pace it wrong? Dead. No stamina? Dead. Overcharging and running around to reposition? Dead. Most importantly, you wasted time not dealing any damage whatsoever. While Greatsword is mainly about pacing too, it's equally about setting up situations to land those big charged hits. It also doesn't change the animations depending on your level of charge, only the damage. Every weapon has it, but a lot of them have so fast pacing that it seems like it doesn't matter at all. For dual blades, pacing is like breathing air on top of a gigantic mountain feeling lightheaded. For Lance, it's like suffocating at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. And the exact same metaphor can be applied to Light Bowgun and Heavy Bowgun. On paper, both bowguns may work the exact same way. Aim, shoot, reload. But their way of showing you how to utilize them is completely different. Light Bowgun wants you to reposition quickly and come out on top by utilizing everything you have as quickly as possible. These mines reward you for good placement by tripping over monsters and even giving you the option to trigger explosions for additional damage consistently. Do you really think they put in those for no good reason? My eyes only see that they were meant to support the light bowgun's rapid fire mechanic. So if someone tells you to do this, while comparing it to this, they have no hell of a clue what the heavy bowgun offers you, let alone what pacing is. This is boring to me. The most important thing in any game is fun. Take any game and check these factors. Are there any mechanics you can improve in? How does the game show me my progress? Does the player's skill actually matter? And most importantly, is there freedom? Every single weapon in Monster Hunter has to go through these questions. Some answers are very obvious, while others are confusing due to the fact that the weapon designers don't tell you their intentions. It is up to you what you make of it. So how do you make pressing one button fun? You figure it out on your own. Mastering a weapon back in the old days was something very special. Nobody told you sh**. You had to go in and face not only the monsters, but also yourself. These days people got a guide for everything, cause in an age of information nobody wants to do anything unprepared. Even I, the great gunman, falls victim to this. Simple things like how do I get up there scare people so much that they don't even think about answering it themselves anymore. You may ask, why is all of this important? 
Remember the combos I showed you at the end of the secret hunting horn guide? These aren't there to show off my skills or teach you the best way to play. They are in there to show you the freedom you have as the player of coming up with your own techniques and giving them names. So if you still don't get the message... When I unsheath the heavy bowgun and look a monster in its eyes, I'm not a hunter anymore. I'm a pilot controlling a heavy artillery mech. The moment you realize how to make use of these long and slow animations, you're starting to feel so good hitting each of these shots over and over again to take down your enemy with precision, skill and knowledge. I rarely stand there shooting just one type of ammo, hell no. That's boring, because I know exactly which type of ammo I want to use for a specific situation. But before you can dive deep into that, you first have to master. Since Monster Hunter 4, I dreamed about having a heavy bowgun with a charge mechanic because I knew this would make me fall in love with this weapon. Generations Ultimate was overwhelming as hell and World only had the damn scope to master. With this charge, each of your shots is a decision. Managing both charged and normal shots while keeping track of your clip size plus aiming at the right range and switching ammo while making long animations worth the time not only sounds complicated, but it actually is. Spamming one type of ammo obviously works, but nobody will notice you for your skill of pressing one button repeatedly. On the other hand, spamming only charge shots may show you big numbers, but your hunts will take triple the time. So how do you make a level 3 charge worth the time? You shoot a couple times. Focus 3 is essential. I'm not ever gonna touch this weapon without it again. Unless I'm forced to. That's like taking away the boosters of a mobile suit. Hopefully you can count to 5, cause with Focus 3 only, a level 1 charge is worth 3 shots, a level 2 charge is worth 4 shots, a level 3 charge is worth 5 shots, unsheathing is worth 5 shots, a dodge roll is worth 5 shots, a silkbind glide is worth 5 shots, a silkbind glide into a melee attack is worth 7 shots, wirebug air dashing into a melee attack is worth 10 shots. If you aren't drunk yet, everything changes when you add the counter charge. A level 1 charge is worth 2 shots, a level 2 charge is worth 3 shots, a level 3 charge is worth 4 shots. But if you unsheath, get hit, blown at, screamed at or earth shaken, the counter charge is gone. Charge level 1 is situational, but almost never worth the time commitment, even with counter charge active. Your go to charge options are level 2 and 3, because they not only fit every clip size, but they are also worth their charge time if you follow up with their relative number of shots. If counter charge sounds a bit too dynamic to you, the counter shot is much more straightforward. 
The only downside is it costs two wire bugs with a recharge of fast. Counter charge costs only one wire bug but has a medium recharge timer, which means you almost always have one wire bug left to use. Do you see how important pacing is? Yeah, but this is just entry level. The melee tackle and body check are pretty simple on the surface. Hit a monster's head for some stun damage. With Slugger level 3, you only need 3 hits to stun Mecha Tritonodon. Without it, 4. That's actually pretty good. How do I know? I made hammer in all of those games before you learned that you can actually stun monsters. Equipping a shield does not increase stun damage on your melee tackle, but lets you block with your attack animation. The shield also automatically blocks for you when you don't do any other animation. Body check gives you super armor but increases your damage taken while doing it. As a gunner you already take increased damage from physical attacks, so taking a heavy hit with body check will often end in hell. The more advanced pacing begins right when you start to master precisioning using your available options. Dodge rolls and silkbind glides are your main strategic tools to get up personal with the monster but also to retreat from risky situations. After a glide you can go into a melee tackle, body check or sheath your weapon faster than normal. Mixing up close, mid and long range options mid fight make this weapon much more fun to learn. Cause standing in one spot pressing the trigger till something dies is boring. It's not easy to pull off all these things without carting a couple of times, but finally that tells you, the player, that you're getting better. One of the most painful cards for the heavy bowgun isn't getting one-shotted out of nowhere because you were sipping on a hot drink playing one-handed. It's getting smashed to dust while sheathing your weapon. Every roll you need to reposition is time you can spend to switch to another type of ammo. Each ammo type is situational, so depending on your position relative to the monster and its behavior, your options change consistently. The most important things for every ammo type to learn are range and bullet properties. I'll give you the basics. Your raw options are normal, pierce and spread, which are your main ammo types for dealing damage. Shrapnel is a special raw option which ignores armor that is best used in rampages because of its gigantic hitbox. Elemental options are divided into two ammo types, normal element and pierce element. Both of these work like their raw counterparts, but instead of raw damage, they deal elemental damage. Elemental ammo has a huge range with a decent bullet speed. Most monsters have different phases they go through. Additionally, Additionally, Rage. Depending on each phase, their element resistances change drastically, giving you opportunities to deal more damage than usual. A lot of monsters can be tripped over, flinched or punched back into a different phase if you stack enough elemental damage. One special elemental type is Dragon Ammo, which deals significantly more damage than normal element ammo, but you only have a few shots. If a monster can affect you with a status, that means that there is a very high chance of you being able to inflict the same to the monster. Your status options are Poison, Paralysis, Sleep and Exhaust, which all have slow bullet speed and are not specifically made for damage, but are great tools to set up advantageous situations. A monster's resistance to statuses increases every time a status is applied, unlike elements which are consistently the same. Level 2 status ammo is a lot stronger than level 1, but because of the increasing resistances it's always great to have both available. Charging status or elemental ammo increases the amount applied to the monster greatly, so don't just spam them if you want to use them efficiently. Your precision options are stickies and slicing ammo. They require you to well, be very precise. Both deal significantly more damage when charged. Probably the best thing about these is that they all have a gigantic range and fast bullet speed. It doesn't even matter if you're in or out of critical range because you deal the same amount of damage. Wanna know how to win another hunter's heart? Save their raw meat with some well-aimed support options. Support options cannot hit monsters or even buff monsters, at least not anymore. They are long range, have decent bullet speed and give other players and non-player characters a variety of effects. Recovery, demon and armor ammo can be aimed near or at other players to activate their effects instantly. While technically not a support option, Trank ammo is able to catch monsters from afar. But we gotta put stuff in boxes for clarity. Finally, our big guns. 
the heavy artillery options. We got the clusters, wyvern ammo, wyvern heart, and wyvern eye. In summary, they all work like this. Shoot one of these, and right before the animation is over, quote one of your favorite fictional characters. I am the truth of your despair. They all have special animations and differ themselves from other ammo types by quite a bit. All of them require a good opening or a well set up situation to be pulled off smoothly. Wyvern Heart and Wyvern Eye though have a meter which make these your special options. Each heavy bowgun has one wyvern snipe built in which can be one of the two, Wyvern Heart or Wyvern Eye. If the meter is full you can load in your special ammo and shoot for the stars. With Wyvern Heart you shoot a damn Gatling gun which damage increases with each shot you land consistently. If your meter is only partly filled you can still use your special ammo. You don't have to wait for it to be full. With Wyvern Eye you shoot a long distance projectile which pierces through a monster hitting multiple times where each hit detonates after a short amount of time being able to stun thanks to the explosions. One big misconception is that the Wyvern Heart is always better than the Wyvern Eye, which most describe as useless. Damage wise this is true, but if you pay attention to their cooldowns and take Wyvern Eye's ability to stun into account, Wyvern Eye offers you enough utility to keep up with Wyvern Heart. Wyvern Heart needs much longer to reach a full meter than Wyvern Eye. Wyvern Heart rewards you for the awaited time, while Wyvern Eye triggers up to 6 explosions just cause you aimed it right. You basically get punished for not shooting your Wyvern Eye while holding it. Wyvern Heart's damage increases with each landed shot, so waiting for a full meter always pays off. If you consider Wyvern Eye as your go to special option, don't be discouraged. If you land a perfectly aligned Wyvern Eye, you may not outclass a half meter Wyvern Heart, but you can be proud of yourself knowing you got the eye of an eagle while looking at explosions within explosions within explosions, being stunning every time you do it. We're talking Gurren Lagan levels of explosions, alright? Literally nothing can compete. After you run out of special ammo, your meter resets to zero until it recharges. Any point in focus will shorten the recharge time by quite a bit. Oh, and I have to mention this. There's a switch skill that affects your Wyvern Snipe. Mech Wyvern Snipe is for dealing damage, healing Wyvern Snipe is for sustaining your health. Developers! Come on! I'm already accepting that you seem to be out of ideas when it comes to the design of the lance. But are you serious? Please give players switch skills that affect their hunting style while offering fun. So here's just one idea of the infinite amount that I have inside my head, which you developers can use with the stuff that is already in Monster Hunter Rise. Swap the healing with a switch skill that launches the player over the monster by pressing the shoot button. Midair, the player then can press reload to reload or the shoot button to stick onto the monster unleashing the wyvern heart or wyvern eye. It then would end by jumping off with a cool pose. The trade off is that your damage is lower but you gain another positioning tool to reload, coolness and something fun to pull off. If you wanna keep that lazy ability, at least make it so the heal spreads over to other players. Time to choose your first mech, pilot. The heavy bowgun is without any doubt the most technical weapon in Monster Hunter Rise. So now that you know about pacing and your ammo options, we're gonna start up that engine. Every heavy bowgun has different properties. The most important ones are deviation, recall, modifications, cluster bomb type and special ammo. Deviation indicates how strong your bullets will curve to the left or right. Some heavy bowguns even have a deviation in both directions where each bullet curves off to a random direction. 
When you fire, recoil is the time it takes until you can shoot again. Depending on the ammo type and ammo level, the recoil changes. When you are out of bullets, you need to reload. This animation prevents you from rapidly spamming one ammo down to zero within 60 seconds. Depending on ammo type and level, the reload speed changes. Long reload times are a pain because some ammo types lock you in place, leaving you open to attacks or slowing down your movement. There are two modifications, shield and power barrel. The shield will automatically block incoming attacks if you aren't pulling off any other animations. The blocking window is quite generous, so this is one of the best defensive options for the heavy bowgun. The power barrel increases a heavy bowgun's attack by a fixed amount. Cluster bomb type only affects your cluster ammo. Arc shot puts you into this crouch animation, making you fire clusters up in an arc. They then fall down and land where you aim them at. Level shot allows you to shoot clusters like normal ammo types. Special ammo shows you which wyvern snipe is built into this heavy bowgun. Wyvern heart or wyvern eye. This is your critical distance indicator. It shows you if you are at the right distance for your current selected ammo. When you are out of range, the bullet will disappear before it reaches the monster. When you are in range, the bullet will reach its target, but the damage is reduced. Is the indicator orange, it means you are in critical distance. It's the optimal range for your current ammo type to deal the biggest amount of damage possible. Every heavy bowgun handles ammo differently. When checking your equipment, specifically your weapon, you can bring up this window which shows you the clip size, recoil and reload speed for all available options. Most important are the shot types, because these will tell you how much your movement changes using a specific type of ammo. If an ammo type has a footprint icon, you can move while shooting. Two cycling arrows let you reload while moving, and a blue down arrow indicates that every shot will be reloaded automatically. In Rise, we also got ramp-up skills, which offer you a variety of changes. Some of them drastically change your ammo options. Make sure to include them in your item sets. Essential skills for the heavy bowgun are Focus, Ballistics, Reload Speed, Recoil Down and Quick Sheath. Check the rest yourself. Time for some tech you can actually pull off, huh? In your settings, change the controls to something that fits your intuition. Holding your controller like this is very uncomfortable, but I'm used to things like the claw hand, so you'll get used to it. I haven't found a good way yet to set up a decent universal radio menu, but putting your bowgun's main ammo options in there speeds up ammo switching greatly. Radio menus take a bit of time to set up, though having them at least available for your favorite weapons pays off in the long run. This for example is my radio menu for the Rathian heavy bowgun. While doing a dodge roll, you can swap arrows quickly with the radial menu. If you are swift enough, you can also do this with the D-pad. The same works while mid Silkbind Slide, Counter Charge, Counter Shot, Wyvern Heart and Wyvern Eye. Ammo types without the footprint icon shoot slightly faster than those with it. Monster body parts have different damage multipliers, which you can study in your hunter notes. Often monsters put you in weird situations where you face the wrong direction to aim on your targeted spot. By pressing L at the same time as an input of left or right on your left analog stick, you can turn the camera by 90 degrees. Celsius, because while aiming you can charge up the heat of the spiral spirit energy beyond the impossible. Doing a melee air attack successfully lets you reload while dealing damage, possibly stunning a monster. After doing this pound reload, you can cancel the animation into a silkbind counter. Edges are pretty useful tools to deal some damage while reloading. You can also roll down edges into a jump attack or roll up edges to climb back up. Sidesteps are not only a tool for dodging, but also great to aim slightly in steps to the left and right. If you just stick some precision options into your target, don't waste your time waiting for the damage. Swap to another option and burst them away with even more damage. When using a heavy bowgun with arc shot, it's often a waste of time to reload your clusters on the spot. After emptying your cluster clip, switch to another cluster type, empty that one and swap to another cluster until you are out of cluster options. 
If a cluster type has auto reload built in, use them last. Reloading holds you off from constantly pacing charged shots, so if your clip is empty, switch to another option. The perfect clip size for a charged playstyle is 5 or higher. Sometimes you're low on a specific type of ammo. What you can do is charging that type of ammo and after firing switch to a raw option. This way you can efficiently use them without losing one specific type too quickly. The main issue countercharged faces is its inconsistency. Sheath your weapon, put down a small bomb, unsheath and activate your silkbind counter frame perfect. If you are out of ammo and have to reload, the animation takes too long and you will be blown away. Wire dash in the air. Aim upwards with the camera while holding down the wire bug aim. Throw a bomb over your head mid-air, unsheath into a melee ground pound and activate your silk bind counter. Again, avoid any reload animations because this is a frame perfect technique. Sometimes you have to make the best of what lies right in front of you with everything you've got. Why should I waste my time waiting for things that will possibly never happen? We all struggle with balancing our spirit with reality. But I'd rather pay the price knowing that my current self gave it all than stay unseen forever. You won't change? <laughs> then go for it.